PhD at Purdue University, uh, and then uh, after uh, sp spending some time at ICTP in Trieste, uh, he joined uh, Chennai Mathematical Institute, and uh, later he joined, around 2000, he joined IMSC. Okay. So we had been colleagues for uh, uh, maybe 25 years. So now I request uh, Raghavan to give his talk. Uh, the title of his talk, I have that written down here. How much is a real symmetric matrix controlled by its spectrum? So, is this audible? Uh, mine will be a board talk. So, there is uh, one word that is common to this talk and the previous one, spectrum. Uh, I will not say at the outset, since the time is short, what this talk is about. It will be clear as we go along. So we, I'll be talking about real symmetric matrices, which I will shorten to RSM. RSM stands for real symmetric matrix. Uh, by the way, I uh, have uh, I'm writing notes for this talk, and uh, unfortunately, I have not finished yet. But I hope to finish, and uh, in a few days' time, it will be up on my web page and also on the web page of uh, uh, the of this uh, outreach program. Here is the here is the address of you will see it here in a few days. Okay, so let us write out some uh, real symmetric matrices. So right there, that's a two by two symmetric matrix, real symmetric matrix where A, B, C are in are real numbers. Okay. And uh, let's also write a, I just want to write a 3 by 3. Let's see. So this must be a B. This must be a, okay, let's say B, D, uh, E, and this must be a C, this must be an E, and this is an F. Okay. So let's say all these letters that you see must be real numbers. Okay. So. These are uh, real symmetric examples of real symmetric matrices. This is a general 2 by 2 real symmetric matrix, general 3 by 3 real symmetric matrix. Okay, the first uh, main result, our first main result for the day is the following. Eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix are all real. So we know that even if a matrix is real, its eigenvalues need not be real. They could be complex. Uh, but in this case, if a matrix is symmetric as well, then the eigenvalues are real. Okay? So let us try to prove this first in the 2 by 2 case. Okay? So we know that eigenvalues are roots of the characteristic polynomial. So let's compute the characteristic polynomial of S, where uh, let me call this S. S will be my notation for real symmetric matrix in general, but at this moment S is this. So maybe I'll call the variable T, maybe you can call it lambda, uh, doesn't matter. T square minus, uh, okay, so we know what it is, so let me write T minus, right, this is the characteristic polynomial, and if you work it out, it will turn out to be t square, and uh, we all know that it's a minus of trace of t, and then there is a determinant. So you can directly write it, or you can just do this determinant calculation. So you get a plus c times t plus uh, a c minus b square. Okay. Now I want to say that the roots of this are real. But uh, we all learned in high school that uh, a quadratic equation has real roots. So if I set this equal to 0 and uh, look at it as a quadratic equation, it has real roots if the discriminant is bigger than or equal to 0. So I just have to compute the discriminant, which I let's do. The discriminant is b square minus 4a, uh, 4ac for uh, where uh, a, b, c denote the coefficients of t square, t, and 
C respectively. So the discriminant in this case is um, B squared which is A plus C whole square minus 4 times C A is 1. So let's compute this. So this is A square plus 2AC plus C square minus 4AC plus 4B square. And uh, you, this uh, simplifies to A square minus 2AC plus C square plus 4B square, which is A minus C whole square plus 4B square, which because A, B, C are real, is bigger than or equal to 0. So we have proved this theorem for the case of 2 by 2 matrix. right? OK, and uh, if you think that you might want to prove it in the same way for a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4, that looks hopeless, right? I have to write this. Uh, uh, it, you will get a cubic in the 3 case. And who knows uh, what the conditions are for when the roots are real. I mean, there are uh, criterion, but it's quite. But uh, fortunately, there is a much more direct proof. And let's do it. I, I want to give a full proof of this theorem now. So here is a, and it, the proof is quite simple. Here is, so let lambda be an eigenvalue, be a a priori complex eigenvalue, meaning I know it has eigenvalues. Okay, and let so you can choose an eigenvector such that so v is non-zero. And V is possibly complex. Okay? I want to show that lambda is real. Okay? The trick is to do the following. So I want to compute the inner product, which I'll write like this. Okay? I'll recall for you the inner product. So if I have two vectors A and B, okay. So I'm thinking of S as an S by S matrix, where little s is the size of S, and this V is S cross 1. Okay, so uh, more generally, if I have A and B in, uh, so this is S cross one complex matrices, or R S, which is S cross one real matrices. Okay, so this for me is B star A. This is, of course, you can write A star B, or you know, it depends. Uh, this is this is my notation. Okay, so the trick is to compute this in two different ways. So let's see what this is. This is V star SV by definition, okay? And you know also that, uh, um, you know, uh, SVV is, uh, you have this property, okay? So, but S is symmetric and the point is S star is equal to S. That's, that's what I have to use, okay? So, Star, okay, well, what does star stand for? I have to say, star is complex conjugate, sorry, conjugate transpose. But S is a real symmetric matrix. So uh, conjugate does nothing and transpose is equal to itself. Okay, okay so let's write this. Um, this is equal to, on the one hand, lambda VV because I have SV is equal to lambda V. Okay, uh, so let's write this, um, or um, we can just do it here. I, I can let's compute V star um, S V V can also be written as V star S V. Uh, so let me write it here. SVV is V star SV, but let me now write this as V star S star V because I'm using the symmetry of S. And then I can now write this as SV star V, and that's V of uh, SV, okay, and that's V of lambda V, 
but you have complex conjugate in the second variable, so it's lambda bar VB. So what we have is, on the one hand, it is lambda times VB. On the other, it is lambda bar times VB, the same, the same quantity. So we have lambda VB is equal to lambda bar VB. But V was an eigenvector. It's non-zero. So this is non-zero complex number. So lambda must be equal to lambda bar. In other words, lambda is real. So we have proved this thing. It's not so difficult. OK? OK. So the eigenvalues are real. Now, let us go to the eigenvectors now. So the next step is what are the, how do the eigenvectors look like? So the next step is eigenvectors. OK? Once again, let's start with a two by two matrix. I think of a two by two matrix. Yeah, before I start this, let me give a formal definition of the spectrum. Okay, so the eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix are real, and uh, so S. Uh, let's call S by, if it's an S by S real symmetric matrix, uh, it's, uh, it's eigen, let's write the eigenvalues are all real. Therefore, I can arrange them in increasing order. Some of them can be negative or positive, but there is a totally, total ordering on the real numbers. So I can be the eigenvalues. And let me even call this lambda, this sequence. Okay? This lambda is by definition the spectrum of S. Okay? And the talk, what it is about is, given, suppose I look at all symmet real symmetric matrices with a given spectrum, what does that set look like? Or something about that. So how much does the spectrum of a real symmetric matrix Exercise, how, what control does it exercise on the real symmetric matrix itself? That's the question. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at eigenvectors. Okay. Okay. So let lambda. So this is a two by two real symmetric matrix. So let me fix. This, let me use that notation for the spectrum. Okay, and uh, let I know this is an eigenvalue, so choose V to be an eigenvalue for lambda one. Okay, so S V is equal to lambda one V. Now I want to make an observation. So let me draw a picture. These are all vectors. So V is in R2 now. Okay, and one thing that I'm using here tacitly is that because lambda 1 is a real eigenvalue, I can find a real eigenvector. Okay, so okay, let's draw a picture. So V is so this is R2 and this is V. I can even assume V to be a unit vector. I can scale an eigenvector to make it unit. It doesn't affect the um, fact that it is an eigenvector for lambda 1. So I scale it. Okay. Now, here is what I want to do. I want to take a vector perpendicular to V, call it W. Okay. Or I could, W could also be on this side. Okay. I claim W is an eigenvector for S. Rather nice, isn't it? So I have chosen one eigenvector, and then I look at a perpendicular vector, any vector that is perpendicular to it. I claim this is, this is, so here is the claim. Let W be perpendicular to V. Claim.
uh, is an eigenvector. So W is an eigenvector. If it is, it better be an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda because lambda two is with eigenvalue lambda two because that's the other eigenvalue. Okay. So let's go ahead and prove this. How do you prove this? Well, what it's enough to show as W is a multiple of W. So ETS, ETS stands for enough to show. Okay. SW is a multiple of W. Or that equivalently SW, to say it's a multiple of W means it's perpendicular to V. So I just have to compute this. Okay. So let's try to do that. Once again, the trick is to use the you have to use the fact that S is symmetric, so you have that. Okay. Of course, now everything being real, I can replace star by a T. Okay. Just the transpose. Okay. So let's do this computation. So uh, on the one hand, it is uh, S uh, V star. So S W V is by definition V star S W. Right. And I replace once again this, right? And then write SV star W, okay? And then um, I can write this as W of SV. And going here, but SV is lambda 1 of V. So this is W of lambda 1 of V is equal to, I can for, omit the bar because we are over real, which is zero, and we are done. Okay? So we have found two eigenvectors which are orthogonal to each other. Okay? But we can do a little more. We can be more, uh, more precise. Okay? First of all, I can scale W so that it becomes a unit vector. So it's either here or here. Furthermore, I can choose W here and not here, because I want V W to be a, a right-handed system. Okay, so there are various words for this. So I want W. I, I will choose W so that it is here and not here. Okay, so if I go from travel from V to W, these are ordered. V is the first one. W is the next one. The counterclockwise angle is 90 degrees. That's one way. Or you can use the right-hand rule. If I go, if I curve from V to W, my the fingers of my right hand and the thumb should point outside of the board. Okay? Or you can say that the determinant of the matrix where the first column is V and the next column is W is 1. Okay? These are various ways of saying this. So what I can do is uh, finally um, choose W. such that W is perpendicular to V, W is a unit vector, and uh, VW is positively oriented. I'll, uh, let me shorten that to positive. So this just means that one of these several equivalent things. Okay? So what we have, therefore, is a vector here and a vector here, which are eigenvectors, and they are uh, 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 orthogonal unit, both of them are, in other words, they are orthonormal basis and it's positively oriented. Okay? And so I have these equations, SV is equal to lambda 1 V, SW is equal to lambda 2 V, and which I'll write like this, S of V W. So this I think of as a 2 by 2 matrix, where V is the first column and W is the next column. This um, can be written this uh, instead of write so I can write like this if you using block multiplication okay okay now I will for uh, a general this is for the two by two case for the general case a proof uh, with a little more care this idea of proof can be made to work you, it doesn't work immediately. You need 
more, uh, a little more care, but it does work and it's standard. So let me just state without proof the theorem. Okay, the theorem is that S is an S cross S real symmetric matrix. And lambda this time is lambda 1 bigger than or equal to. This is the sequence, is the spectrum of S. Then there exists V1, V2, Vs, right? Orthonormal basis, positively oriented, meaning. If I take the determinant of this matrix with V1 as first column, V2 as the second column, Vs as the last column, that S by S matrix, that has determinant 1. Okay. If you have, we'll see later in a minute that if you have an orthonormal basis, that determinant either has to be plus or minus 1. Okay. That's a, because that determinant is volume. That, that immediately tells you that, but uh, we'll see that in a minute. We'll review that in a minute, such that S of uh, th this is an eigenvector for value lambda 1 and so on until this is an eigenvector for lambda, value lambda s. I will write it in matrix terms as this equation. Okay. So this is one of the most basic theorems in uh, in mathematics, it's a very basic theorem in geometry, in physics, in uh, in almost every application of mathematics. This is a very you know, very basic theorem that you can find if you have a real symmetric matrix. You can find vectors like this, which are orthonormal. That is, each one is unit and they are mutually orthogonal. Moreover, you can take them to be positively oriented, such that v1 is an eigenvector for value lambda1 dot 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 vs is a for value lambda s. That's what we have said. Okay. Okay, good. So we have learned something already. Um, but this is standard. Uh, that is in textbooks. So I want to move towards something that is uh, also well known, but maybe not so standard. Before we do that, however, uh, I need some more preparation. So we'll try to write this. So the next uh, bit of uh, work that we need to do is to write this in a slightly different form. Okay. So then what we'll do next is this is our theorem. We'll express it in different, slightly different language. Okay. For this, I will uh, want to make a list of uh, um, associations. So what I'll have is sequences of length s. S is some fixed uh, integer of vectors in RS. So remember, I'm thinking of RS as S cross one column vectors. Okay. So a vector. So for example, something like this. This is a sequence. Okay. And associated to this sequence, I have. A, I can think of this sequence as a matrix where V1 is the first column. V2 is the second column, etc. Vs is the s column. So each one is s cross 1. So this is an s cross s matrix. So I'll write MSR to mean all r cross s cross s matrices with the real entries. So on the, so this is you can if given given a matrix, I can think of the columns as the sequence. Given the sequence, I can think of the put them as columns and get the matrix. So this is a one to one correspondence, right? Okay, but now we'll refine this. This is nothing at all. But now we'll there's some content here. So what if? So let me call this V. If V is a basis, what can I say about this matrix? Well, we all know that the corresponding matrix, if and only if the corresponding matrix is invertible. So this uh, matrix. Let me call this A. A is this matrix. A is in GLNR. That is invertible matrix. Okay. I'm slowly moving towards this. What if it is an orthonormal basis? Okay. So next is V. Suppose it's uh, uh, orthonormal positively oriented. So suppose it's only orthonormal for the moment. What kind of matrix do I get here? 
what is A. So for that, let's do a computation which with, we are all familiar. So I'll write, so let's do the, this computation. So I take this matrix, take its transpose. I'm writing conjugate transpose, but since we are in RS, it doesn't matter. Okay. So let's do this calculation. So this is my S by S matrix A. This is the transpose of that matrix. Well, let's do this. If I take transpose of this, I get V1 transpose, V2 transpose. This is the correct way to take the transpose of a block matrix. Okay, you have to take the transposes inside, but also take the transpose. Uh, this is what you get. Right? And by row into column, if you do, you get V1 star V1, V1 star Vs, and here Vs star V1, Vs star Vs. But what are these? These are nothing but the inner products. Maybe Vs, V1 here. V1, Vs here. And this Vs, Vs. So if I take V, take the corresponding matrix A, and compute A star A, that is just the matrix of the inner products. Okay, which means if V is an orthonormal basis, this is the identity matrix. And conversely, if this is the identity matrix, it's clearly V must be orthonormal. Okay, so this corresponds to what are called orthogonal matrices, which means by definition that if I take A transpose A, now I'll be careful and write A transpose because A star A means it's unitary actually, but since it's real, doesn't matter. A is equal to identity, which then should also be equal to A transpose. Okay, and finally, if V uh, is orthonormal and positively oriented, right? Then, of course, it's orthonormal, so I have this condition, it's orthogonal. But then what does positively oriented mean? We, our definition was that if I take this matrix and take its determinant, that must be equal to one. Well, okay, let's observe that. An, so if I have an orthogonal matrix, I have this equation. So if I take the determinant on both sides, the transpose of the determinant is, uh, sorry, determinant of a transpose is equal to the determinant of A transpose is determinant of A. So I get determinant of A square is equal to determinant of I, which is determinant of A square is equal to one, which means determinant of A is plus minus one. Okay, so here, so if you have orthogonality already restricts you to the determining determinant being plus or minus one. If in addition to being orthogonal, the determinant is one, that's a special, what's called a special orthogonal matrix, and they correspond exactly to the columns of, what we have just proved is that the columns of a special orthogonal matrix are form a positively oriented orthonormal basis and conversely, if you have a po positively oriented orthonormal basis, the corresponding matrix is special orthogonal, okay? So this is A, special orthogonal. And uh, let me write it here, I didn't leave myself in a space there. Special orthogonal means that is a, a transpose A is identity which is also equal to A, a transpose and determinant of A equal to one, okay? So we have this, now let's rewrite this equation now. Now this is a special orthogonal matrix now. So, so um, yeah, this is a special orthogonal matrix, okay? So if I write that, what I have is, here is the theorem we have proved. If S is an S by S RSM, there exists a special orthogonal matrix Of course, I can call it A, but for emphasis, let me call it P. This is my P. This is also my P, such that, 
So let me call this uh, lambda is the spec is the spectrum of S. Then S P is equal to P times lambda one lambda S. Or better still, if I multiply by the transpose of P, P I know that there is P transpose P is identity. So I'll get S is equal to P lambda one lambda S zero zero P transpose. You can write a transpose or inverse, doesn't matter. So here is, a, here is another version of the same theorem. We have finished the rewriting. It's saying any real symmetric matrix it can be conjugated to a diagonal matrix. In fact, such that the diagonal is, in fact, the eigenvalues in descending order, if you wish, okay, by a special orthogonal matrix. This is what we have done. Okay? Okay. Now, let us. Uh, what I would like now, so so far is standard, but maybe starting now, we'll move to something, again, like I said, it's well known, but maybe not that standard. What I would like to concentrate on is, <coughs> so we'll fix a lambda. So instead of starting with a real symmetric matrix, I fix a certain sequence, okay? So fi fix. Lambda, lambda one bigger than real. So as these are real numbers. Okay, sequence of length s. Okay, I want to consider the set of all sy real symmetric matrices with spectrum lambda. So by definition, this is s is an RSM such that, so it's S cross S, of course, because I want this to be my spectrum. Spectrum of S is equal to lambda. OK, that's my definition. So I'm interested in how this object looks like. And uh, uh, so this is what I mean by how much can S vary if I fix my spectrum? OK, how much control does the spectrum exercise on the real symmetric matrix, OK? OK. So for this, let us just do a little bit of further, just a little more rewriting of this, OK? So if, so look at this. If S is my RSM such that spec is equal to lambda, then I know that there is a special orthogonal matrix such that this is true, OK? Conversely, if there is a special orthogonal matrix such that this is true, then, so that this equation is true, then you can easily check that because this is special ortho, so you can take the transpose of this, you will get P transpose, transpose is P. This is symmetric, so that doesn't change. This P will become PT. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if I take something of this kind with P special, ortho, um, special orthogonal, then, um, this is symmetric. I mean, this is what I'm saying is, well, I'll write it and then it's uh, obvious. This theorem allows us to characterize this set in terms of the special orthogonal matrices. So, what this, so by the theorem, but I mean that theorem there, this set is equal to. P P T P is in so now this is means special orthogonal. So you take a special orthogonal matrix this is what we have. Okay? So what we have sh shown here is that given S real symmetric with spectrum lambda it is of this form. The converse is rather trivial. If I'm given a matrix like this, then it's real symmetric. And it's, uh, it's similar to, because PT is P inverse, uh, this is uh, similar to this diagonal matrix. So its uh, uh, spectrum is clearly this. So this equality is uh, one side is by the theorem, the other side is trivial. Okay. OK, now this gives us control over what this set looks like. So we study a little more 
what this one looks like. Okay? And in terms of that, we'll be able to say what uh, some topological properties of this. Okay. So observe that what is this? This is a subset of Rs square. So you can, this is an S cross S matrix of real numbers. So I can think of this as Rs square. So it's some, it's some subset living in some Euclidean space. So you can ask topological questions, right? Is it closed? It is, uh, is it compact? It is, con is it connected, etc. And we'll be able to answer that using properties of this, this description, okay? So let us look at, once again, let's look at SO2 first of all, okay? So what's a special orthogonal two cos two matrix? Well, it's of the form, the first column is one unit vector and the other column is a second unit vector which is orthogonal to it and positively oriented, okay? So we'll go back to our picture that we drew. So this is equal to any element here, P is equal to VW where V is a unit vector. I'm sorry, my picture isn't great, but that's my unit circle. And W is this, and this is 90 degrees. And uh, uh, we, as we, you know, a good way of uh, thinking about this, if you think of this angle theta, so V determines W. So already if I know this column, I know this column, okay? So, and V I can write as, if this is, so it's X coordinate is cos theta, is uh, y coordinate sine theta. This is 90 plus theta. So here, this is uh, sine of 90 plus theta, which is minus cos theta. And this is cos of 90 plus theta, which is, oh, sine of 90 plus theta is equal to cos theta, I think. And this is minus sine theta, right? So we know what it looks like. So P looks like, V is the, so, x, y coordinates, cos theta, sin theta, and then x coordinates, y, y coordinates. So it's minus sin theta, cosine theta. That's how things look, okay? And let's ob observe some properties, okay? Um, it is a, I mean, so, so what, I, what, I, what I have to do is look at this. So what we are looking at is SO2 is, all these, all such matrices, uh, four cross four matrices, as theta runs over real numbers. This is what we have, this is our description, okay? Now certain things are clear. Now I claim this is a bounded set because there is cos theta, sine theta, everything is bounded by one, okay? I claim it's a closed set. Well, you can see, for example, that these two are equal. So for example, if I take x, y, z, w as the coordinates, the equations defining this set will be x equals w, uh, y is equal to minus w. And to make this cos theta and sine theta, if I write x square plus z square is equal to one, then any, you know, cos theta, sine theta satisfy this equation. And the moment you have this, you can write x as cos theta and z as sine theta. So in fact, this is a, a closed set. It's defined by these equations, okay? Actually, you can think more generally like this. You have this ATA is equal to I. Well, A going to A transpose A is a continuous function, and it's the inverse image of a single point, okay? So that's closed, okay? So it's bounded, it's closed. So that's, uh, if you know the word compact, it's compact. Furthermore, it is connected because it's the continuous image of uh, the connected set R. Okay, so it's connected. Okay, right, so we, now we have the setup that we need. Okay, what about SOS in general? It is closed because of the reason that I said, you have more generally this, just this equation ATA equal to I, this, and determinant equal to one, that's both are closed conditions, okay? Now, it's bounded because each column, you have an ortho, each column is an um, unit vector. And if you have a unit vector, all its uh, entries are bounded by one, right? Okay, that's also obvious. This is obvious, this is obvious. Maybe connected is not so obvious, at least I couldn't think of a simple proof, but it's true. Okay, so let's take for granted and we have proved it fully for SO2, okay? So now here is, 
Okay, so now we are ready to pose the question. Okay, so what we have is that conclusion is that this set here, RSM lambda, is a connected compact subset of RS square. Why so? Because of this description. I have, okay, so the, the upshot of all this is that RSM lambda, lambda is fixed, okay, is a connected, closed, bounded set of, set in, why? Because it is the image, if you wish, of, because you can take a map from SO S to RSM lambda by sending P to P lambda 1 lambda S 0 0 PT. Now this is a continuous map, it's even a polynomial map, and th this maps, the image of this map is precisely RSM lambda by what we have observed, the, and uh, this is a connected set and a compact set, therefore, so this is, so is this, okay. Now we are able to, ready to pose the important question, okay. So now we have a compacted connected set, we ask the following question. Okay, I, I consider from, so this is RSM lambda, remember it's sitting inside uh, MSR, let me call it, this set of S cross S matrices. And from the set of S cross S matrices, I have a natural map, if I want to, the set of S tuples of real numbers by just taking a matrix A and mapping it to its diagonal. So A is an S cross S matrix. I just remove all the other entries, concentrate only on A11, A22, A33, etc., and map it to that. Okay? This is a linear mapping, right? So in, in, in other words, this is also a continuous, it's, it's, it's a projection, it's a continuous map. Okay? Question. This is a compact connected set of this. Therefore, under this projection, the image of this is going to be a compact connected set of RS. Right? What is it? What is that subset? It's a question. Characterize image of RSM lambda image, okay, to be precise, in RS of RSM lambda uh, under the diagonal map. This is the diagonal map. So let me use a capital D. Okay. Now, let's try to do this again in the two by two case. We'll explicitly see this and I'll tell you the theorem for the general case. Okay, let's do the two by two case. So, what does an RSM look like? Well, we have our theorem. It looks like this, right? Every RSM looks like this. And we know every, how every special orthogonal matrix looks. So, it precisely consists of sets like this, cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta into lambda 1, lambda 2, and then the transpose of that. and then sine theta cos theta, right? I just have to compute this, so let's do this. So this is as it is, and this one, lambda 1 multiplies the first row, lambda 2 multiplies the second row, and then I do this, so here is lambda 1 cos square theta plus lambda 2 sine square theta. So what I have is lambda 1 cos square theta plus lambda 2 sine square theta, okay. What do I have here? It's lambda 1 cosine, cosine theta sine theta minus lambda 2 cosine theta sine theta. So lambda 1 minus lambda 2 
cosine theta sine theta and it's symmetric therefore I can write this you know I know what this is I don't even have to do it and what is this last one so rho into column so that's lambda 1 sine square theta plus lambda 2 cosine square theta and if I want to look at the diagonal I just look at all sets of all I just look at this okay so the question is what does this set look like lambda 1 lambda 1 and lambda 2 are fixed as you vary theta what is this set of in the, this is a set of in R2 okay now it's not very hard to see that this is the line x equal to y I'm drawing the picture in R2 of the image so I take here lambda 1 lambda 2 and the reflection here in the line it's lambda 2 lambda 1 and you see if I put theta equal to 0 then sine is becomes 0 and the cosine becomes 1 so I get lambda 1 for the first one and lambda 2 for the second one so I get this point this is this I get when theta is 0 when theta is 90 I get this point and it keeps going back and forth so this is my image so that my compact connected set the answer for this is that it is precisely the convex hull so called convex hull or the line segment between these two points okay in particular you see that the first entry cannot exceed it has to be between lambda 2 and lambda 1 that is the so if I take a real symmetric matrix and look at the first entry what we what we are saying is the first entry must be between the two eigenvalues so does the second entry in fact it must the eigenvalues the pair of eigenvalues must live uh, I mean uh, the, the, the diagonal entries must live on the line segment between these two eigen you know the, if, you, if lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 2 lambda 1 okay now I this is five minutes okay so let me finish with um, um, what the statement of the general characterization is in the S case okay so so let us look at so one observe one thing that uh, the sum of the diagonal elements is the trace of the matrix which is equal to also the sum of the lambda which is diagonal values okay so um, that is why you see the image was lived on the line um, x plus y is equal to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 right this is the line x plus y is equal to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 okay so it is constrained so so although the image is in rs it is restricted to the plane where the sum is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues so there is a constraint okay in other words what that tells me is if i try to do the th the next case 3 by 3 case I do not have to be scared I actually, actually can draw a picture in two dimensions because it is one dimension less okay. So let me try to do that draw that picture for you how it looks like in three dimensions and make a statement and maybe stop with that okay. So, <coughs> so I will draw the picture the corresponding picture in three dimensions will look like this. Um, so I have to take the, the model is I have to take the eigenvalues and then permute them in various ways so let me write lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 that is one you know and then it is just some that is not a very good picture. okay so what so now let me switch one and two here two and three here one and three here
So I have uh, one too many. Is it? Do that at all. Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, right, okay, thanks, thanks, yeah. Uh, and this was switch uh, one and three. So, okay, okay, so the answer is, if you look at a real symmetric matrix with eigenvalues lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and project it, take any symmetric, real symmetric matrix, and look at its diagonal, and keep on generating all the real symmetric matrices like that, with eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and see their diagonals, and look at it as a three tuple, then you will precisely see this region here. In general, I'll say it, I'll not write it in, because we are out of time, I'll put it in the notes. In general, the answer is, you take all possible permutations of these eigenvalues, you will get several points, and then you take all convex linear combinations of this, or what's called the convex hull. Okay, that is the um, uh, image of this uh, region. Okay, and uh, there are. This is by no means the only characterization. In fact, there is a concept called majorization. And uh, which is uh, very important. And uh, let me hold up this. This uh, classic book uh, called Inequalities by Hardy, Littlewood, and Polya. Apparently, most of this book is about this concept called majorization. Okay, which is a very so. Although this looks like a very special and you know problem, it is not special at all. It underlies. Uh, it's very central to a lot of mathematics and like I said this is most of this book is about majorization and I don't have time to state it but majorization is another characterization you can there are several different characterization and one of them is by means of what is called majorization I think I'm well over time so I should stop thank you for your attention so we discussed about this uh, diagonal map so which are other interesting maps we can uh, good question yeah good question uh, the one map that I was going to say next is the following that I know is interesting it's a good question or what happens if I take the some other you know you know non diagonal what happens right that's a very good question I don't know the answer but I, I know one other map which I, which was also going to be part of my talk if there was enough time I'll just briefly mention it here is the here is here is the question so you take a real symmetric matrix, S by S, but look at the first S, S minus 1, S minus 1, the, the part that is here. Just leave out, so this is my S by S matrix, right? Take out the S minus 1 by S minus 1 piece, okay? So that is also a real symmetric matrix. That will have a spectrum. How will this, this spectrum control that spectrum okay and there is a beautiful answer to that which is apparently was found in the 19th century okay so that's a very good question I don't know the answer okay by the way I'm not an expert on this I got into this because uh, and that's the last part of the abstract it is uh, you know in some research problem that we were trying this it came up naturally so I learned a little bit about this so I'm by no means an expert <laughs>